Shalom, saints. Welcome to the second part of the Holy Spirit series where we're going to talk about the promise. We said we're going to talk about the power, the promise, and the presence of the Holy Spirit. And today we're talking about the promise of the Holy Spirit, how is a promise to us from God. If we can turn our Bibles to Acts chapter 1, I will read from verse 1 up to verse 5. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all the things that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he showed himself to these men and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And it's amazing here, Jesus is speaking to his disciples just before he departs to go back and be with the Father. And the Bible says he gives them this command. And he tells them to wait for the gift that the Father had promised. And of course, he was referring to the Holy Spirit. So we see clearly that the Holy Spirit is a promise. A promise from the Father. A promise to us who believe and receive Jesus Christ by faith. So we're going to talk about the aspects of the Holy Spirit being a promise to us. And what it means and how we can apply that to our faith. The first thing that we see is that the Holy Spirit or the baptism of the Holy Spirit has always been God's original idea. It's not something that um, originated in the thoughts and the plans of men or the plans of believers, uh, good thoughts of people who thought that this would be a good thing. You know, if we have a Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Prince of God to help us, um, I think it would make life much easier. It would make evangelism more effective. And therefore, then let's ask God for this. No, God in his own thoughts, in his own initiative, felt that it was important, and he promised, therefore, that we should receive the Holy Spirit. So we need to realize that this is God's idea, and if it's God's idea, then surely it's a good thing. It's nothing, the Holy Spirit is not some optional extra uh, for the noisy people, or as some people say for the happy clappies, and then they can do the Holy Spirit thing. We just want to come and quiet and, and uh, just enjoy the Word of God. But the Holy Spirit, saints, is central to our faith. That's why God himself made a promise to us, and he wouldn't promise us something that is not essential. It's also fascinating to see that the way we were created, we were, carry, we were created to carry the very presence of God, the Spirit of God. For instance, in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 to 20, it says that our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit, temples of God. We are meant to carry his presence. We are designed, in a sense, as spiritual houses and these houses are designed to have a, the spirit of god in them ephesians 2 verse 10 again says that we are god's workmanship created in christ jesus to fulfill good works prepared in advance for us to walk in there's a deliberate design there's a blueprint you're not an accident i'm not an accident but we were specifically designed and engineered for a purpose and the bible says a good purpose and one of these things or this one of the key aspects of this purpose is being filled by the Holy Spirit. So, saying you were designed to be filled with the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. That is one of the things that God had in mind when he made you, when he created you, and when he brought you to this earth. So, this is an essential part of our existence. We are meant to carry him and exude his presence. The other side of that coin, therefore, is that which you have to be aware of. If we're not filled by the Spirit of God, then what are we filled with? Because spiritually we do not exist in a vacuum. That's why in Matthew chapter 12, Jesus talks about this and he says, He who is not with me is against me. If you are not for me, you are against me. He does not gather with me, scatters. So in the spiritual realm, there is no such thing as neutrality. Either you are filled and being influenced by the Spirit of God, or then you are being influenced and even being filled by the spirit of the devil and his demons, and they are influencing you. You look at the world today, and I believe from time immemorial, human beings have always had a sense of spiritual curiosity. 
a desire and a focus on the supernatural. Even the scientists who want to rubbish and say that the supernatural doesn't exist, God doesn't exist, what they are saying is the supernatural is too good to be true because if evidence can be brought forth of the existence of the supernatural and God, they'll be there in a flash with all their cameras and all these things because they are not denying it because they don't want it. They are denying it because they believe it's too good to be true. But saints, the supernatural is not too good to be true. God designed us to live a supernatural life filled with his very spirit and purpose. When the Holy Spirit is not there, like I said, there's this curiosity for the occult and despair and depravity are inevitable. Uh, look at the example of Saul, for instance, in 1 Samuel 16, verse 14. It says, when the Spirit of God departed from him, an evil spirit came upon him. There was an instant exchange. Initially, when he obeyed God and he was anointed by Samuel, things were going well for him. The Spirit of God was upon him and he inspired and led the armies of Israel powerfully. But when he disobeyed and the Spirit of God left him, the Bible says, it seems immediately, an evil spirit was upon him. And that's when we see Saul begin to degenerate into this jealous leader, angry, rebellious leader. He had rebelled already, but it's, uh, it's like it was multiplied. And he wanted to murder David, the one who was actually fearing and seeking God. And he so, became so obsessed with killing David that he, he probably was no longer doing his kingship duties well. And that's probably one of the reasons, apart from God's departure, one of the reasons why... Israel was defeated and he was killed, or he ended up being defeated completely by the enemies of Israel because the Spirit of God was no longer with him and demons were influencing him. And it's quite interesting that conversely, when David, who had the Spirit of God with him after he was anointed by Samuel, when he played for Samuel, for Saul, it say this evil spirits would leave, order would be restored, joy, peace would be restored because the presence of God was with David. So saints, when we do not have the spirit of God in our lives, the Holy Spirit, it predisposes us to a depravity and a curiosity that will lead people to seek the occult. Many people seek the supernatural through the occult, through witchcraft and, and all these other things, or they follow a certain prophet or man of God and they focus on him because they want that spiritual touch and they go to seeking that spiritual experience, which God understands. Because the desire for the supernatural saints is legitimate. There's nothing wrong with wanting supernatural, the supernatural. There's nothing wrong with wanting to experience supernatural power and manifestations. We were created like that. We were created to carry the supernatural. But the only one legitimate means of experiencing the supernatural is by being filled with the Holy Spirit. So when we don't have the Holy Spirit, we open the door to explore the supernatural in the wrong way. And we can end up being dominated by demons of witchcraft, death, destruction, drug addiction, and you name it. Because we're trying to fill that void that the Holy Spirit should fill with other things. The next thing I'll talk about is that we need to realize that the promise of the Holy Spirit is an inalienable part of the salvation package. You cannot separate the gift of salvation with the gift of the baptism of the Holy Spirit in terms of God's mind and understanding. If you read, for instance, in Galatians 3, verse 13 to 14, Paul is talking about this to the Galatians, and he talks about how Christ was sacrificed and he died for our sins and he became a curse for us. And then he puts in there and he says, so that we may receive the promise of of the Holy Spirit. So one of the reasons why Jesus died, apart from, of course, forgiveness of our sins, because we could not uh, wash away our sins ourselves, sins could only be washed away by blood, and that being the blood of Jesus. But there's more to salvation than the forgiveness of sins. Paul here literally says that you were forgiven of your sins through Christ's sacrifice so that you could be filled with the Holy Spirit, the promised Holy Spirit. So part of the salvation package, package, saints, is being filled and encountering the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. The, the salvation narrative is not complete if you do not walk into a relationship with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is essential to us experiencing the fullness of God's salvation, be it here on earth and as we enter into eternity. The Holy Spirit is essential. This means that, saints, 
it is impossible for you to fulfill your perfect and true destiny if you are not filled and not baptized with the Holy Spirit. He knows. That's why Jesus would talk to his disciples in the book of John before he went to the cross. And you talk about how the Holy Spirit would guide them into all truth, how he would remind them of things that he taught them, how he'd lead them and counsel them, and how he would be the one to ensure that they would not be left as orphans. The Holy Spirit saints here, the presence of the Holy Spirit is essential. He is key to our lives. He's not just a nice thought, but he is a person that is vital for your spiritual survival, your spiritual identity, and your spiritual purpose to manifest for you to reach your potential in Christ, in God. You need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. So you cannot fulfill your ultimate destiny, saints. You cannot discover the gifts that God has placed in your life. You cannot discover the reason why you're here on earth. You cannot discover what great contribution you can give to humanity before you depart into eternity. You cannot do that before you are baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit. So I pray that this is stirring you and showing you, saying that you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit if you haven't been baptized in the Holy Spirit. And we'll talk more about the mechanics of the baptism of the Holy Spirit and what it looks like in the next segment when you talk about the presence of the Holy Spirit. But today we're talking about that promise. It's so important. It's, we need the Holy Spirit. I cannot say it enough. The last aspect I'll talk about is the fact that the promise of the Holy Spirit is a promise for promise. What do I mean? What I'm trying to say is that while the Holy Spirit himself is a divine promise given uh, way back by God, a promise of the ages. He himself is a promise who serves to point us to the ultimate promise, and that is the promise of eternal life. And I would like to read this and share so that we understand that the Holy Spirit is also there in our lives to point us to the ultimate promise of eternal life and without him we cannot understand and we cannot even experience the ultimate promise of eternal life with the father Ephesians 1 verse 13 to 14 Paul writes and says and you also were included in Christ when you heard the word of truth the gospel of your salvation having believed you were marked in him with a seal the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. It talks about how when we have the Holy Spirit is a, a guarantee of things to come, a guarantee of eternity. So there is an aspect of assurance there that the Holy Spirit comes into our lives to point to and to assure us of eternity with God, of the reality of our salvation. So when the Holy Spirit comes into our lives, the first thing that I want to point out there is that he gives us a foretaste or a pre-education of what we shall experience in eternity. He's a small deposit in a sense, relatively speaking. There's nothing small about the Holy Spirit, but relatively speaking, the Holy Spirit is there to point to something bigger that will happen and that we'll experience for all time in eternal life. When the power comes, and the Bible in the book of Hebrews chapter 6 talks about uh, how when we have the Holy Spirit and we partake of him, it says we test of the power of the ages to come. We receive a foretaste of heaven where God rules and dominates all evil. There is no evil that can dominate him. So when we have the Holy Spirit in our lives, the devil cannot dominate us. He may try, he may fight, he may do all these things, but he cannot rule one that is filled by the Holy Spirit. So it's experiencing God's sovereign, powerful, and insurmountable rulership. And the Holy Spirit points to that, that power in us, that God is sovereign and God is mighty. The power of wholeness, the Holy Spirit heals, he resurrects, he gives life. That, that's why the Bible says um, in Ezekiel, I believe it's Ezekiel 47, in the, I believe it's talking about the Holy Spirit, and it says that in heaven there is a river that flows. And wherever this river of the presence of God flows, 
things live. There is life. And I believe that is pointing to what the presence of God does in our lives. Wherever the presence of God is, there is life. There is no death. When it's saying there is life, what is it talking about? It says there is nothing that can be associated with deadness or death. There is no depression. There is no stress. There is no worry. There is no fear. There is no sickness. There is no pain. There is no destruction, defeat. There is no despair. Because wherever the river flows, it brings life. It brings life to thinking. It brings life to, to physical bodies. It brings life to emotion. It brings life to anything that is good and perfect as it was made by God. It is given life and breath. So the Holy Spirit is there to show us and give us a foretaste, an experience of what we'll experience in eternity. When the Holy Spirit shows up, things happen. People get healed. People get restored. People receive peace. People receive understanding of truth. People receive comfort. And what is pointing to, apart from just the fact that Jesus is alive, as we talked about in the other episode, he also points to the fact that what you're experiencing now, you will experience for all time, unconditionally, and it will be unrestricted. Health, joy, unspeakable all these things people when people receive the baptism of the holy spirit people talk about different things and they'll talk about this more uh, in the next installment but people talk about receiving a sense of liquid love flowing within them some people talk about like a rain of peace you can feel rain and that peace is is coming in you some people talk about a, a, a mighty but good energy to serve god a love that is there. Many positive feelings. Some people feel joy and laughter just being poured into them. The Holy Spirit. And he's pointing to the fact that when you enter eternity, all those things are going to happen multiplied and then hindered. So the Holy Spirit gives us a foretaste, saints, of what God has in store for us. The power, the presence, the peace, the wholeness, and the comfort. Then the last aspect I want to talk about here in terms of the promise for promise, is that the Holy Spirit is the bona fide visa for entry into eternal life, into eternal salvation. You see that the Bible there said, where we read, uh, the last passage we read, that he is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance. He's the guarantee, he's the sign that, look, Something is going to happen, it's real, and as long as you have the Holy Spirit in you, you can be guaranteed, though you have not yet come into that place where we have the fullness of eternal life, where there is no pain, no sickness, no death, no depression, but the Holy Spirit is saying, if I'm there with you, I'm, I can guarantee that those things are going to come. There is going to be a time where there will be no pain, no sickness, and all these things. So he becomes that guarantee and that sign, if you like. The Bible says you are marked. So he's like a sign. And I like to say he's like a supernatural visa. Guaranteeing our entry into heaven. Our entry into eternal life. He's the bona fide visa. So if when people on judgment day are going to be entering or heaven or what, what at whatever stage as an individual are going to enter heaven and it's I can see a picture of it being like a place where there's a border control system. And there you have the immigration officers and they say, can I see your passport, sir? Do you have a visa? And you can imagine how these, these things happen. And they look at your passport, they scrutinize your passport and your face, but they don't look necessarily at uh, the quality of your clothing. They don't look at uh, uh, your occupation or where you come from. Though those things they might consider. But what they want to see is how genuine is your visa, if you do have it. And the moment you have no visa, no matter how nice you look or smell or how much money you've got, step aside, sir. Uh, but I've done this and, and I've been good and all these people know me. Step aside, sir. And then you know trouble has begun. And that's what's going to happen when you stand on the doorway to eternity. Your visa is going to be, sir, can we examine your visa? Do you have the Holy Spirit? Did you, were you filled by the Holy Spirit? Come freely. And when you have the Holy Spirit, like I say, He gives you that assurance. And, um, and you're standing in line to meet the immigration officer. You are so much at peace. You have such peace. And you're not even worried. And other people who want to border jump or who want to bribe or who want to do all these things, you can see they're anxious and they're worried. And, 
and they're shaking and they're just hoping that maybe I'll make it through. But let me say this, saints, unfortunately, or should I say, say fortunately rather, there's no border jumping into heaven. There's only one way, and that's through salvation in Christ, which is certified by your being filled with the Holy Spirit. He's that visa, he's that sign that gives you confidence as you face the immigration officer where it's not about your works, it's not about your consistency, it's not about your ability, it's not about your race, it's not about how good you've been, although when you, the Holy Spirit is with you, he changes you, of course, but that's not the point as such. But when you have the Holy Spirit, you know you've got your visa. And that's why there's such a joy, unspeakable, that fills you when you're baptized with the Holy Spirit, which you can't explain because your spirit knows now that yes, you're a child of God, you're going to inherit eternal life, you're going to enter eternity. So when the Holy Spirit fills you, you know you're not going to be told to step aside. You've got the visa. And that, I believe, is the oil that's been talked about in the uh, parable of the ten virgins. The oil filled with the Holy Spirit. He guides you. He teaches you about salvation. He gives you right understanding of how salvation works and how to walk that path and how to abide in Christ as he commanded us to abide in him. That can only happen, saints, if you have the Holy Spirit. You cannot abide in Christ without the Holy Spirit. It's impossible. He's there to help us to walk the straight and narrow and to stay in the straight and narrow and, of course, to fulfill our divine destiny. There's no bribing. There's nothing else. There's no shortcut. I'm reminded of this funny story, but it actually happened in Uganda. I believe it was 2017, about a certain rich fella who died, and in his will, uh, he said that, he wanted to be buried with 55,000 US dollars um, to give to God on Judgment Day so that he could be allowed into eternity. I'm not sure what kind of life this man lived. I'm not sure why he felt he had to bribe God. I'm sure he knew. He was aware that he had sins, but I guess no one told him that to be forgiven and to have your, your spirit, your sins washed away, your conscience washed, you need to turn to Jesus. Or perhaps he was stubborn and prideful because he felt that he could solve everything with money. I don't know. But of course he was wrong. And what happened was he was actually buried with 55,000 uh, United States dollars in a metal casket. But uh, barely 48 hours after his burial, his clansmen went, exhumed the coffin, and took the $55,000. Because they knew that, you know, of course what he was thinking was cuckoos. But he was, convict, convict, he was convicted, he was convinced that he had to do something about his sin and he wanted to border jump. Perhaps he had bribed his way in life, probably. That's an assumption. When he needed something, when he needed to escape uh, a set jail sentence, when he needed to get uh, licenses, when he needed to um, get a stand in the right place where he wanted, he probably paid his way around. But he didn't realize that you can't pay your way into heaven. There's no border jumping saints when we, for us uh, when it comes to eternity, when it comes to heaven, there is no bribery there. There are no crooked officials. You can't bribe God. You can't bribe your way into heaven. Just ask God to fill you with the Holy Spirit. Because when the Holy Spirit is there, if you are straying and you're getting into a danger zone, he will show you that, look, where you're going, this is not right. This is the way of salvation. This is the way to heaven. This is the way to fulfill your purpose. So you can't get lost if you're in a relationship with the Holy Spirit. But without him, you can lose your way very quickly and very easily. So we need the Holy Spirit. He's our supernatural visa. He's there to help us. Saints. So I pray that this has been useful, this has been helpful, that the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit of promise. He is God's idea. God thought about this right before any man thought about it and promised us we didn't think about this. It was God's idea. Therefore, it's a good idea to be filled with the Holy Spirit. It's not an optional extra. He's the promise. He's there to help us. He's there to guide us, to usher us into eternity. The Holy Spirit is part and parcel of the salvation package. Christ died for our sins. He has to wash us, but he didn't just die so that we could be washed off our sins. He also died that we could enter into a relationship, a fulfilling relationship, supernatural relationship with the Holy Spirit. The, so the Holy Spirit is part and parcel of the salvation package. And the last thing I talked about was that he's a promise for promise. Being filled with the Holy Spirit ensures that you enter into the ultimate promise of eternal life with God the Father. And he's our visa, he's our guide, and he gives us a foretaste of what eternity is all about. So saints, be blessed, keep well, and desire that promise. It's a promise for all people, and I'll talk about this next installment 
and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Seek the Holy Spirit and be blessed, saints, in Jesus' name.